Hi guys, welcome back. What? You still haven't left for white. Oh yeah, that's Watson? what we're doing. Okay. Hold on, chill, man. Chill, man. Map. We have to go to. Where do we have to go to? Police station. Yeah, I have to go to white shop, right? I think I have to go to the police station, I think. Well, if I follow Holmes's instructions, then to begin my investigation into this leather apron, I must first head to the police station. What's that guy doing over there? Watson's pretty brave going out here, like, at night. I would never do that. Okay. Oh, hello. Good evening, sir. Good what evening. do you... I, I know, know you. you. You were here last week with Sherlock Holmes. Indeed. I have come to bring a message from Sherlock Holmes for Inspector Aberline. Very well, I will pass it on. But come to think of it, someone was asking about you recently. Finley, the caretaker of some shady boarding house nearby. Does that mean anything to you? Ah, perhaps. This is where we got your stupid bag. Actually, I read in the star that you have arrested a suspect called Leather Apron. Is that the queen you shouldn't up there? believe what you read in that rag, sir. The man is being hunted, but we have yet to get our hands on him, and we aren't close to it either. Why ever not? Bah, he's a specialist in the streetwalker racket. These girls make pitiful witnesses, and we don't inspire confidence. Furthermore, the man seems to be pretty discreet lately. Someone must be helping to hide him. How to find Leather Apron? How to get on his trail, then? One of these girls would have to confide in us and give a valid description of the man. Then we'd ask around the journeymen, who use aprons, I imagine. Goodbye. Well, goodbye. I must go to Finley's boarding house. Away. Lots of shady people out here at night. And everybody gets wonders why they get murdered, you know? Hello. Good evening, Finley. Oh, good evening, sir. Sir. Aren't you the gentleman who was with the great detective the other time? That is indeed me. Dr. Dr. Watson. Watson. Tell Thanks. me, Finley. I was told that you were looking for us at the police station. Indeed. I wanted to thank you for last time, you know. That vagrant has never set foot round mine again. I even found a tenant. One who pays his rent, I mean. You don't seem very happy. But you were lucky to have found a good tenant so quickly. It's just that this man is very strange. He paid several days in advance and I gave him a key to the place. Since then, he goes out every night and returns at ungodly hours. I'm sure he goes to visit the ladies, but still, every night. And when he moved in, something must have broken in his case and stank up the stairs in his room for two days. I think it was a jar. It must be over there. He just left it there? Tell me, have you heard talk of Leather Apron? By the papers, that's all. This man seems very sinister. Do you know any journeymen who use this type of apron? The slaughterhouse butchers, I believe, but definitely the cobblers. I know one, old Isaac Solomonovich. His workshop Solomon is on a small Nevich. street in the Jewish community, across from the hospital. He's a good man. He can help you. But you know, the people there are very close and don't share much with non-Jews. Why is he painting a door at 3 o'clock in the morning? At your service, sir. Or whatever time it is. Hmm. This odour is very strong indeed. But the whole neighbourhood as such has a dreadful stench. Finley might have an idea as to what this jar that contained. What do you want, Doctor? You're right. The pieces of the jar that your tenant broke do give off a strange smell. There's a door behind those bricks over there. That's quite normal given his trade. Yes, and what would the trade be of your strange tenant? A doctor like yourself, I believe. Dr. Tumblety, a foreigner. Canadian, perhaps. <gasps> Dr. What? Tumblety. It Canadians might be interesting strange. to know more about him. Goodbye. Thank you, Finley. At your service, sir. 
There's a door behind this. Uh, is there anything here? Nope. Okay. Um, where am I meant to go now? What's down this way? Hello. Tell me, is it you should return home, sir? Um, what am I meant to do now? Watson. Well, and yourself? And how's your uncle? Well, he sleeps a lot, but it hasn't seemed to be suffering. Your medicine has worked wonders. Thank you again. It was the least I could do. I have come to see you about a certain leather apron. Have you heard of him? Oh, yes, of course. Terrible things are said about that man. Have you ever come across him? Goodness gracious, no. But I know that he has threatened and taken many girls in uh, my situation. I don't know what more I can say. That's but, a weird. Um, uh... Bella will be able to tell you some. Who is Bella? Bella Pullman. Pullman. She's the landlady of the place where I. Uh, I could take you there if you like. Please do. Who, hey, Watson? It's me. It's Lucy. This gentleman would like to speak to Bella. It's the doctor who helped me. I must leave to return to my uncle. Thanks again. Oh God. Hello, Poppet. Out of the way. I don't like the look of you. Hey, baby, I'm Kermit the Frog. Okay, I'm stuck. Uh, in here, I'm assuming. Can I get a if you'd be patient, Madam Bella will arrive in a moment. <laughs> Good evening. I am Dr. Watson. It is young Lucy who told me to come see you. Ah, so you're the Good Samaritan who saved her uncle without asking for anything in return. And now you've come to see me, no doubt, to explain that the poor little thing doesn't belong here and you will see to her future. Well, if you expect me to let her leave with you, <laughs> it's not that, ma'am. Uh, you should know I am a married man. And why should yes. that matter? I need some information. I believe there has been a misunderstanding. The reason that Lucy sent me here is that you may be able to give me some information about Leather Apron. Are you a doctor or a constable? I am most certainly a doctor, but I am acting in this matter in a private capacity, and I would like to find this man. Well, if you're able to rid us of him, I'll give you a week's worth of free passes. That man is a thorn in our sides. He spies on the girls in the streets and watches them inside the houses, spying through the windows. And as soon as they're finished with a client, he jumps on them without any warning and forces them to give him their money. I've never seen him, but one of my girls was attacked by this man and she said that he wore a leather apron and carried a knife. And his face, oh, he has a horrible head with rat's eyes and a deformed mouth. She even said that she knew his name, um, Pizer or Pizer, I think. But I don't know Pizer where she or can Pizer. be found. Margie Nutcracker, the girl I'm talking about, could tell you more, but I had to let her go last week. Why did you let Margie go? The poor girl caught a shameful sickness, and the symptoms have attacked her face, if you know what I mean. So I Syphilis? gave her notice, and a little bit to help her along. I don't know where she is now, but she'll certainly be getting treatment at the clinic if she's still in the neighbourhood. Did you speak to the police? Ah, what would they do? Who cares about the girls in the streets? Let's ask about the Canadian. Would you have received a visit from another doctor, a stranger? by the name of Tumblety. I'm just like you, Doctor. Sworn to secrecy in my profession. 
But as I've taken a fancy to you, I can tell you that this name is not unknown to me. And if you do me a little favour, it is possible I might remember something about him. Okay. <clears throat> uh, what kind of favour must I do for you? You see that man over there? He's a rich artist, a painter, a regular client round here. Well, yesterday, he came and left his cane in the umbrella stand in the hall before going into one of the rooms. Well, when he returned to this room, the cane had disappeared. Looks like 16 years old It's a cane with a massive silver knob. It must be worth a fortune. He threatened to call the police unless he got free services in my establishment for a year. I'll be forced to accept, unwillingly, of course, given the services that he's demanding, unless the cane is found. Okay. Did you question the residents regarding the theft? They didn't see anything, and there's not one of them that would risk stealing from a client here. Who was in the room when your weasel of a client was in the chambers? There were a few that came and went, but Mary could tell you better than I can, because she was the one at the counter yesterday. Thank you, ma'am. No problem, my angel. <laughs> Shouldn't you be wearing something different for cleaning the floor like that? What happened to this rug? Oh, it's when we got a coal yesterday. I asked the young man to fill the pile. He came back to put it down, but his feet were covered in soot and he made a black print. Madame Bella said it was my fault and I got a shilling's penalty. I also have to clean the print and it's no picnic. He has immense feet, that boy. Okay. I heard that there was a theft yesterday. Did you see anything? No, and I was here the whole time. Okay. Who delivers the coal? It's never the same person. I've never seen that lad before. It's not very, uh, Do you helpful. always keep an eye on the coat stand? Oh, yes. Well... When the coal delivery came, a client came out of the chambers and stopped me from seeing the boy who brought the bucket of coal. You don't think he would have taken advantage? Until next time, miss. With pleasure, sir. Okay. Yes, Dr. Watson? Thank you, ma'am. No problem, my angel. Um... These paintings are suggestive, at the very least. Best not to stray off in that direction. These paintings are the same. suggestive, so the, at oh, the very least. Here? Oops. No, this is fine. This we can't do anything about. Um, I guess we can leave then. You're in a rush, my pretty. Come, I'll have you done so quickly you'll only have time to pay. Gross. Let me go. Okay. Um, so now what? Oh, this is the police station, the thingy, Lucy's lodging, the brothel, the clinic. I'm not exactly sure, uh... Oh yeah, okay, let's go see if we can find it. Girl, we're sick. We should be at the clinic, maybe? Badum. Hello. Good evening, Doctor. My name is Dr. Watson. Pleased to meet you. Good evening. I am Dr. Gibbons. Likewise. I have come to see you about one of your patients. Margie uh, goes by the nickname Nutcracker, who gets her <laughs> prescription from the clinic. She's a lady of the night and is afflicted with a venereal disease. I know who you're talking about. Indeed, Margie has syphilis and is being treated with mercury. Do you have her address? No, and for your information, she left London for good three days ago. She felt threatened. Margie felt threatened? But by who? I believe that Margie was particularly scared of a terrifying man who attacked her once. Did she say the name Pizer? 
or Paitha. Unfortunately, she didn't give a name, but she described a man with shifty, rat-like eyes yeah, and okay. a mouth twisted in a sinister grimace. At least her stories are like... Did Margie have any idea where this man who terrified her so much might be found? No, but she told me that another girl who'd been attacked like her had told her that this man worked in a cobbler's run by an old Israeli. Also, she saw him again last week the night at a big fire. She told of going to see the fire like most everyone else in the area. While there, she recognised her attacker in the crowds gathered at the warehouses. There was no mistake in a face like that, she said. She kept an eye on the man the whole time the firemen were working in order to avoid him. Okay. Did Margie Oops. have any idea? She, she. Goodbye, Dr. Gibbons. Until we meet again, my dear colleague. Okay, so. Oops. Hmm. This interview with the doctor revealed an important fact. Leather Apron could not be the Bucks Row murderer. According to Margie, the villain passed most of the night of the crime at the fire. He could not have been at the scene of the murder at the moment it was committed. He is nonetheless a dangerous character. Okay, obviously new dialogue, that's fine. Um, should I head to the warehouses? I'm not sure. How long have we been playing for? Oh, this is the place, a yeah. A cobbler shop. Hmm. Closed. Well, obviously it's like 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay. White Chapel, Chapel Street. Street. What's this? Oh. Bucks Row. Tell me, is it? I'm on duty, sir. So? I have no reason to go that way. Okay, so what do we do now? We just go back to Holmes? Guess we do. I have no reason to go that way. Okay, then. Um, okay, so we gotta find this warehouse, then. down this way. This is where the body was found. Yes, okay. I have no reason to oh, go that way. Oh, I want to see him run. It doesn't work. this way then dead end I have nothing to ask I have nothing to ask where down the where are the uh why can I run I have no reason to go that way that's the Solomon of Medivish. so there's two of them I then. am listening me lord me lord This is the clinic. Oh, nasty weather, isn't it? Er, I'm stuck. Why does it always do that for? Okay. Nothing down there. Can't go in here either. That was a weird sound. Did you hear that? Tell me, is it? What are you looking for? Tricks, opium, girl, sailor. Where am I? Oh. I have no yeah, reason I'm to go back that over way. here.
I don't know where to go, guys. So I'll look around a little bit more and um, I will see you when I can figure out what to do. Thanks for watching.